in Dallas, our one-on-one conversation with Ole Miss quarterback Jackson Dart. I, I was thinking earlier, so you're probably not going to remember this, but two years ago, you had just gotten to Oxford, and we were sitting in the Manning Center in the uh, the, the grill area, and we sat down. It's like nobody was really there to talk to you. Things have changed a little bit in uh, in three years. Yeah, I'd say a little bit, uh, a little bit more pictures and autographs from from that time. I'm not sure you were dressed quite as well then either. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I was. I've always been dressed great. Uh, my mom is always making sure I'm on. I'm on par. Um, have you ever thought about the fact that you're playing at a time where it's maybe better to be a college football player than it's ever been? When you think about all the stuff that's available off the field, in addition to the level at which the game is being played. Yeah, I think so. Uh, my dad does a good job of reminding me here and there. Uh, he played college football at Utah. Um, from 94 to 2000, so he's like, he always tells me the times are different, but um, I just think I'm super grateful to be a part of it. Um, uh, I think it's a special time um, for, you know, just all the all the athletes out there and being able to take advantage of our opportunities, and um, at the end of the day, everything's going to show um, from your field of play, so you always just got to keep the main thing the main thing, everything, everything else will come with it. I don't think your dad would have had a deal with Nicholas Ayer to, to get pl from place to place when he was there in, uh, in Utah in the 90s. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe. He was a good player, though. Wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad way to go. Um, I asked Lane about this. There, there's so much change year to year with, with team makeup and all those things, but last year and this year's team are kind of unique. In some ways, in your mind, didn't this season start in Atlanta at the Peach Bowl? Does, it, does that even make sense? Yeah, to be honest, I made my decision to come back like two days before the Peach Bowl game. Um, so it was right up until that point. I just think, you know, the conversations that I had with my coaches and, and the people in my corner along with, uh, you know, the guys that were on the same bubble that I was of being able to, you know, make the decision of either leaving or, or coming back. And um, I think that we all just saw the possibilities of this season and, and how successful that we were last year. And at the end of the day, like, we all just love Oxford. We love Ole Miss. We love this program and, and what it's brought to us and our family. So, um, you know, we felt like it was only right to come back for, for one last dance and do it the right way and go out the way that we want to. I know nobody talks about injuries in real time, right? I mean, it's just fine. Looking back to that January 1st in Atlanta, how, how broken down was your body at that point? Jeez. Uh, well, fortunately, we had some time off before the bowl game, so I was able to – you know, take some time off from football and try to just heal up for that seat, for that game. Um, but it all went downhill on the very first play when I hurt my ankle. But we were able to get through it. We have great trainers, great doctors who were able to take care of me. And then um, obviously I have a long off season, so I was able to take advantage of trying to get 100% this spring. What's the reaction mentally? I mean, first play of the game, and you've done all this to get back to this point. You're like, okay, I actually feel better. And now it's like, it's right back where we were. Yeah, I think in your in your head you you have some thoughts that I probably shouldn't say, um, but you know when you're in the football game when you're in the moment, um, I always feel like there's nothing that can happen to me that can take me off the football field. So um, if I'm able to stand up and I'm able to move my arm up and down, then I'll be out there. So Prescorn for a lot of last season was banged up, and I think he was maybe the healthiest he had been all yeah. season. At the end, was that? maybe what you had thought all along he could be and then kind of fast forwarding into this year if he's healthy what he can be in this offense yeah absolutely I don't think anybody really understood how good of a player he was until um, you started to see him get healthy I think a lot of people forget that his first time like really playing football was when we played Alabama and uh, he had bro broken his foot in our mock game uh, the week before the season and he had taken all that time off and then for Alabama on you're just trying to manage him any way that you can to, just so he can be out there on the field so um, as the season went on he was able to get more healthy and I think that that's where you saw a lot of his production go up um, I think all along that we knew that he was a special player um, but I think that he brought you know a whole nother level to to that Peach Bowl game and um, he's just a special weapon to have out there when you have a quarterback and a, and a tight end that's on the same page you know every single play I think that makes it really hard for a defense you see it all the time in the league um, especially nowadays, you know, you see like Kelsey and Mahomes and Kittle and Purdy and, you know, just guys being able to be on the same page and, and him just being such a large target and then having great hands and ability after the catch. It's it's definitely made it um, a lot easier for me and, and a lot harder for the defense. In terms of weapons, I feel like you've got a bunch, but 
I'm really intrigued to see how, see how defensive coordinators try to, to scheme you guys because it's like, okay, do you want to take Trey Harris away? Well, you've got Juice Wells on the other side. And then there's Jordan Watkins, who seems to always get overlooked, and he's just reliable. And then what does that do for matchups with Priestcorn? Those are some nice chess pieces that you've got. Absolutely. And I think at the same time, you know, we have the best coaching staff in the country who are able to exploit those uh, those things from a defense. And, um, you know, it's a great problem to have, uh, being able to have all those weapons. And um, you definitely can't r go wrong with throwing to any of those guys. It's such a special group of you know, playmakers that we have out on the field. And um, as a quarterback, it's just my job to, to get the ball in their hands as early as I can in the play and then let them go do the rest. So. Uh, they're definitely an explosive unit, and I'm really excited for them. I feel like your relationship with Lane has grown over the course of the time that you've been here. What, what is that like now? Yeah, it's grown tremendously. Um, I can remember my first you know, week at Ole Miss where he takes an approach completely different than any other head coach that I've been around. And I think that his biggest thing when I first got there is he wanted to see how I was going to handle adversity of being in a quarterback competition and then – kind of go from there and kind of just learn a lot about myself from just sitting back from afar and, and observing and, until nowadays. It's like, you know, yes, he's my head coach, but he's also one of my, my best friends. You know, I can go to him and talk to him about anything. Um, you know, once we get done with our football stuff in the day, we're out playing pickleball for hours right outside the facility. Or if it's just me going over to his house, just chop it up. Like, um, you know, I have a lot of trust in him and, and he shared a lot of wisdom. Um, to me through his experiences throughout his life. And I think that we've just formed a special connection. He's turned into kind of a pickleball psycho, hasn't he? Yeah, he ain't better than me, though. He's not? No, nah, he knows that. And your teammate is who, Prescorn? Yeah, it's Prescorn. We're the best. Okay. I, I hate he's not here to refute that or, or argue with it. I, I guess we've seen some of those on social <laughs> media. A um, couple things for you, we'll wrap up. Um, I know everybody does the one game at a time. You can't look ahead, all those things. But maybe you can in July. Uh, is there a game that, that you're like, that's the one I can't wait for? Jeez, I feel like all the SEC matchups are super special. Um, just the environments you get to play in. I think the big one that stands out to me is, you know, we want to get – I lost to LSU um, my first year um, in Death Valley, so that's definitely a game that's exciting to me. Um, plus, it's just a special crowd, special environment to play in and uh, there's not many like it in college football. I think Georgia at home is going to be electric. And then some of our new away games, you know, going to South Carolina, I've heard their atmosphere is pretty electric as well. So um, I'm really excited to, you know, take on those matchups and, and um, you know, just take advantage of the opportunity of being in those moments. And, uh, you know, my time of college football is kind of running out a little bit. So uh, I take it day by day, step by step, and I'm really excited for those opportunities. Do you like the challenge of a road game? almost as much as getting to play in that home environment? Geez, they're both super fun to me. Um, you know, we have such a great home fan base. So I think my favorite wins are when you can when you can win in front of them. But there's something different about winning on the road and uh, being able to quiet a crowd. Like that, that feeling and just feeling the energy go out of a stadium. Um, I wish I could, you know, have, have those experiences every single day. So um, you know, I love winning at home, but there's nothing like, you know, winning a big game on the road. All right, last thing for you. I want, I want to give you a situation. You give me the play call, what you're looking for at the line of scrimmage and what you see. Defense just created a turnover. You got the ball right around midfield. You want to take a shot on the first play. What's the play call? And then as you walk to the line of scrimmage, what does it look like? I probably am not going to give the, the play call, but I'll kind of give you a little concept. Um, I like, you know, our post over concepts, um, three level reads. Um, I think they're super explosive. We do them really well. Um, but absolutely take a shot at the end zone with the playmakers I have and uh, go, not, go watch them make a play for me. All right, so you say three levels. So are you, are you progressing underneath to deep, or are you going deep and working down? Deep and working down. I like it. Thanks so much for your time. Good luck this year. Absolutely.